Honorable uh, Member Ali Sair Maulana, you have 10 minutes. <coughs> Thank you, Honorable Chair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. <coughs> While the House debates today on the Institute of Valuers Bill brought forth by the Ministry of Finance, I wish to state at this juncture that very little credit is given to Honorable Mangala Samaravira, one of our nation's foremost statesmen, a leader par excellence, <clears throat> who today champions the concept of inclusivity, coexistence, and moreover, hope. Hope that the work we do here in this house can shape a brighter Sri Lanka for the future. <clears throat> Honorable Chair, given the vitriolic diatribe prevalent in the discourse in all parts of our country today, our nation is in dire need of leaders like our finance minister, someone whom I firmly believe is ahead of our times. I thank Honorable Samaravira. Honorable Chair, I rise today when our nation is in the depths of deep despair in the aftermath of the barbaric terror attacks on the 21st of April. What we witness immediately after the attacks, a testament to the true Sri Lankan spirit where we Sri Lankans are truly unique people in which it is naturally inherent for us to be compassionate, sharing, resilient, and tolerant. However, our people are on the brink of falling prey due to the acts of undesirable, divisive elements with, age, with agendas of the age all political strategy of the divide and rule and have <coughs> the seize the opportunity to spread hate and incite racial unrest against an otherwise patriotic and peace-loving people in an effort to create political instability for their own gain. Honorable Chair, as a proud Sri Lankan, I am one of over 2 million Sri Lankan Muslims who have, from time immemorial, always fearlessly exhibited unstinted patriotism to Mother Lanka and have contributed immensely in countless ways to the development of our nation, especially the preservation of our national sovereignty throughout the course of our history. Furthermore, Muslims in Sri Lanka have practiced our faith, a faith who has peace as it is cornerstone in tolerance, acceptance, and respect for all other faiths and cultures prevalent in our rich diverse country. This house is well aware of the contribution that Muslims have made from the times of Yo to the establishment of the Republic to becoming economic powerhouses, contributing largely to our nation's coffers and to the ultimate sacrifices they have given for the country in this modern day through our times of war and peace. I myself sacrificed my seat in this house in 2004 and nearly my life for the sake of ushering in peace and stability in our country on behalf of all citizens. These contributions were on full display in the aftermath of April 21st in which the Muslim community worked day and night alongside our Galan security forces to identify those who were directly or indirectly associated with the terrorists. It is purely due to these actions that the Honorable Prime Minister stated two days ago 
that Sri Lanka has established a world record in eradicating ISIS terrorism from our country within a period of one month. This would not have been possible without the direct cooperation and collaboration with the Muslim community in Sri Lanka. Despite all this, however, regretfully, we have witnessed continuing hatred unleashed on the Muslims of Sri Lanka, which continues unrestrained and unabated as the government watches on silently and passively, albeit a few lone voices like Honorable Minister of Finance. Furthermore, these elements with vested interest have mobilized raped rousers to discredit the government by way of directing allegation towards certain Muslim politicians as well accusing them for being complicit with the terrorist of April 21st. It is in this backdrop that eight of my fellow Muslim colleagues in this house and myself who held ministerial portfolios in this government decided to tender our resignation unconditionally with immediate effect three days ago to facilitate the government to expeditiously investigate into these allegations that have been leveled and furthermore for the protection and well-being of not just the Muslims but all people in this country and to safeguard the international reputation of our motherland. Honorable Chair, to those whom were involved in this diabolical heinous acts, we pledge our fullest cooperation to work alongside the authorities to let the highest penalization of justice be served upon you, irrespective of who you are and what your beliefs may be. Furthermore, we would be failing in our duties as elected representative if we allow for the Muslims community to be racially stereotyped and marginalized based on the whims of a deranged few who claim to act in who claim to act in the name of our faith. They do not speak or act for us. And we will raise our voices for the rights of the two million patriots who live and breathe for our country. In this light, Honorable Chair, that I appeal in this highest possible manner to the leaders of the government to take swift, punitive action against these hate mongers who are walking through our streets spewing wild racism with impunity. Honorable Chair, I appeal to the members of this House on both sides of the divide to avoid the urge to politicize and exercise prudence to establish a bipartisan approach together to assure the safety, integrity and sovereignty of our country and its people is intact. In that midst of all this darkness, let us seize the opportunity to emerge with hope by setting the past aside and look to the future for the sake of our children. Let us defeat hate with love, compassion and tolerance and by doing so we destroy the agendas of our enemies. Sri Lanka, our beautiful resplendent and country, country has a bright future ahead and let us attain that future by first achieving integration and reconciliation, not isolation and separation. Thank you for the time given, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you.